Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today we're working on the balers. Got them in the shed. Um, if I haven't said anything, the goats are now out of the shed. Uh, we just kind of packed them in the calf barn for now. I don't have the the third pen and the dairy barn done yet. Um, so. We are going to get these pretty well winterized, I guess. Um, I got to clean the chambers out and uh, drain the acid out. Um, so I've been working with the dealership that I kind of go through with these. Uh, if I have a problem, they, they're the ones that fix it. Um, and they are about... I want to say an hour away or so which isn't great but they do a really nice job and our local dealer here just doesn't they don't get the big balers in like they do up there um, so uh, today is Wednesday the Wednesday before Thanksgiving Thanksgiving is tomorrow um, so, uh, where was I going with that? Monday afternoon, there's a truck coming to get one of these. I think I'm going to go ahead and um, throw the 2017 on first. I will clean the 2015 out. Acid, get get that all cleaned up the best I can. We'll pack it, park it in the corner or something. Um, but what they'll do is, uh, for one thing, they're gonna fix the problem I'm having now and then go through the entire machine and replace anything that is worn, not working correctly, anything that looks like it should be replaced. Uh, what they'll probably do is they'll go through it with me ask what I would like replaced and also talk about the issues that could occur with that particular part um, as well as they'll clean it out and make sure it's a hundred percent winterized and all that but are a hundred percent ready for winter storage we'll say that because I'm gonna do pretty well the winterizing stuff um, so I got a bale here in the chamber. Um, this baler, both of these balers are equipped with the bale ejection system. So there's um, one set of tines that are for like the back half of the chamber and then there's two sets or um, for the entire length of the chamber. Neither, the, neither one of them works. Um, the main issue is the dirt, dust, um, it gets in the rails and the rails don't work properly. I deal with it all the time, corn stalks. Hay usually works just fine. But anyways, so we do have a bale here that is tied. So what I'm going to do, I got a big crowbar right there and I got a sledgehammer. We're going to pound it through here. And then I'll hook the chains on and we'll try, try and pull it out. At least as far as I can and then we'll probably pull it out and reset it. Um, the other baler here, there's no strings. Um, it's basically just a big pile of uh, slabs in there I'm going to have to try and work out. But I want to get one done for sure. And then the other one will come after that sooner than later. So I don't have my camera today, so you're just going to have to imagine. But I will continue to uh, kind of show you what I got going on here. So here's what I got. pounded this um, crowbar through. And then we hooked the chain on. 
hook the chain on this side as well. Um, so we'll take the skid loader then. I'll hook on the end here and we'll give it a pull and see see if we can get it to move. What we'll do is we'll pull it about as far as I can get it and then I'll probably go ahead and re-grab. Um, pull. Uh, we'll see. If it comes out a little bit easier, maybe we can just grab the bale fork and pull it right out. Well, now we're in the same boat. It's unbelievable how tight and stuck this stuff gets in there, especially when it sits. Should have probably did it right away, but well, whatever. So now we'll take that bar and I'll stick it in from the top. And we'll just kind of have to pry this stuff out. And that'll, well, that'll be what we got to do. Alright guys, so, um, I think we got the chamber about half, halfway cleaned out. Probably about halfway. It's, it's a hard job. Um. I, I'm getting it though. It's actually coming out fairly easy compared to that that uh, hay I did the last time. Um, so halfway down with that, got about halfway, and then I kind of stopped, took a break, just to recuperate again. Um, and then I went ahead and uh, I drained the acid tank. Um, so. I got my tote here, my partial tote that I've been running out of the last part of this summer. Um, and then we got this hose here that's got a valve on the end. So I take this hose and stick it in there and you let as much as you can out. It doesn't all come out unfortunately, but um, I mean, you get about as, I figured there was a gallon or two in there yet. Um, and then what I did up here, there's these three um, check valves or air leaks. I guess I'd call them a check valve, but I don't think that's quite right. Basically, you can unscrew these and let the air out of the line. So I unscrewed them. And I kicked all the all three pumps on and uh, completely emptied that tank out. Unfortunately, I dump a little bit on the ground. This won't bother anything. It's actually we'll throw some of this sand in it. That'll soak it up pretty good. Um, that won't bother anything. But um, so I did all that. Uh, closed everything up. I dumped three gallons of pink RV antifreeze in and then I kicked the, all three pumps on again and ran some into the ran some through the system and then uh, yeah then we shut her off and it's good to go for the winter um, so I <sighs> I talked about this once before. I do not think the acid will freeze. I don't think that freezes. Um, the main thing is to get get it out of the pumps. Um, that stuff will corrode a pump, or it'll it'll pretty much corrode anything. I don't have too much trouble with the baler eat my baler up, but um, if it sits in the pumps too long, it will cause havoc, or so I'm told. Um, so you want to get that out of the pump, so, and it really ain't a big deal. You just drain everything, you dump the stuff in, you run it through, and away you go. Um, 
So I got this one done. I got it half dug out. I got till Monday to get it out, but I don't want to be doing it Monday morning. So we're going to kind of keep keep at it um, over the course of the next couple days here. Um, this one's next. We'll see if I go ahead and do this tonight yet or if we worry about it in the morning or there's more in here there's 55 gallons in here yet um, I'll have to unbolt this yeah I'll have to unbolt this and, um, and then we'll stick that in the tank and yeah so We'll have to do that. I don't know when we're going to do that. If I do it today yet or if I wait, I don't know. And then uh, it'll be the same thing. Drain it out, crack the valves, dump the stuff in, run it through, and then and then we got to do this, and that's going to be a mess. I am glad I did stop bailing, though. I mean, this stuff is mush. It wouldn't have made good bedding. This, stu this stuff's actually really wet. Um, and I knew that when I did this, I was just trying to make sure the baler was working. Um, but that stuff, that laid pretty much all day. And it still just feels damp and not good. So, I guess it is what it is. Um, if it wouldn't have rained Saturday night, or no, Sunday night. It rained Sunday. If it wouldn't have rained Sunday, we could have got that stuff bailed. Um, the neighbor with the round balers called me up, and he wanted to go look at it, and yeah, it was it's mush under there again. So I don't know. We'll see. Probably won't be doing much, but if we do get a chance to get it, it'll probably be round baled. So. <laughs> All right, guys, it's about two days, two days after my, that first, two days later, I guess. Um, we had Thanksgiving. I believe I, sh I did the rest of this on Wednesday, and uh, we had Thanksgiving, and yesterday I kind of got caught up with some other stuff, and uh, I had to go to another Thanksgiving then, so... We didn't get much of nothing done yesterday. Um, but now, um, we're back on the balers. Um, so a quick recap of what we got done here. So this chamber is probably about halfway cleaned out. That is what I'm gonna be working on today. The tank, acid tank is winterized. I dumped um, some RV antifreeze. Uh, here, I'll show you what it is. I suppose that's backwards for you. Maybe it'll straighten out. I don't know. Um, RV and marine antifreeze. Um, I like to dump that in. Get the acid out of the pumps and all that. And uh, we also do that to our sprayer. I believe he m may have done that. Um, that acid tank is drained. However, it's sitting at kind of an angle. There's a lot more. Um, there's a couple more gallons I can drain out before I flush the system and all that. So, right now, I'm going to start working in the chamber here. Hopefully get that completely cleaned out. And, uh, that'll be good for when they come and pick it up. So, I got my camera. So, I'm going to let that run and... Hopefully I can just palm straight through this without getting tired. <laughs>
Alright guys, we got got it cleaned out. So I'll have to kinda get some of that loose stuff out of there. I also wanna want to uh run the stuffer and try and get it as cleaned out as possible. And then um another thing I'd like to do is to trip the knotters and uh manually uh, rotate the reel, the reel, the the flywheel, and uh, send the needles up into the knotters, and just just see what's going on. If I can see anything that's not working correctly, um, the other thing I'd like to get the needles up in there and just double check all the wheels or uh, pulleys on the. There's uh little rollers in there that the strings kind of ride at, kind of like a pulley. Um, there's one or two on the needles, and then there's one up above there. Um, just to double check and make sure those are all turning. Um, they will, if they're not, they will be replaced. Anything in there that's wore out will be replaced. Uh, I'm going to have the professionals go through it. Uh, I don't remember if I said that they're gonna come Monday to pick this baler up and uh, When they bring this baler back, they will take that baler um, If I had a nice place to work I would try to I would attempt to do most of it on my own um, However, they know what they're doing. They have a shop uh, Heated area and all the tools and all that so we'll just let them take care of it even though it's it's not going to be cheap but if the baler keeps running that's priceless I guess um, so yeah so we're pretty well done with this baler I'm just going to kind of touch up a little bit I don't know how much I'm going to do but um, it's a job uh, one good thing though this stuff is heating a little bit not that, that not that that is good, but uh, it definitely keeps you warm in there. And especially now I'm sitting on a pile and it's kind of warming me up too because it's warm. Um, I guarantee that's going to be the same over there. Uh, I'll try and do that here probably early in the week. Uh, I'd like to get, I got a few other things I'd like to get accomplished before tackling that um, and then we got to start organizing the shed here and packing machinery away for the winter so in the baler here there's these rails and these rails go back and forth and on these rails there's these fingers that they're actually really sharp um, if you crawl in you got to be careful you don't catch your knee on it you'll rip your pants or cut your leg open um, but anyways, here's another one. There's two of them. Um, and they, they go back and forth. They run. I got them levers on the side there. I don't know if you can see them. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and they go back and forth. There's a piss, there's a hydraulic ram on the underneath that operates these. And the problem you get with this, uh, dirty dusty uh, bedding um, I think I have a little uh, usually hay comes out fairly well um, but corn corn stalks never seem to want to come out and what happens is these rails get pulled down or to the back I guess like this rail should probably be way up probably way up here but it's all the way extended and what happens is right behind this on the back side it packs full of uh, dirt and dust and mud and whatever else in there chaff and then when you go to eject the bale this is all the way forward so you got to push it back well it can't go back because there's stuff behind it and uh, Sometimes you can get it to go and sometimes you can't. It's just 
Uh, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. I'll probably, well, I'll have to raise the ramp up. But we'll probably run those and just see if we can get them to loosen up. Um, I would like to maybe get in there and pick some of that loose. Some of these don't exactly move the nicest. They're supposed to be pretty free and because um, I don't think I explained these either. When the rails come forward, these will actually lift up and grab into the bale. And uh, well then when you go back, then they fold back down and you know forward again it raises up and it grabs a bale um, it it is what it is I guess it kinda works but uh, yeah so that's that's why I had to dig it out by hand there yeah I explained that I I was thinking about explaining that at some point and uh, I just remembered that so yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Any questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you next time.